Hi, everyone. Aaron here for Zolotech. And over the past couple of weeks since I've done a news update, there's been a lot of new information regarding when to expect the next iPhones, as well as some iOS versions we didn't expect. So a couple of weeks ago, I was covering iOS 14 and watchOS 7, and now we have iOS 14.2. So a little bit later, I'll talk about when to expect iOS 14.2 beta 2, but let's first talk about when to expect the next iPhones in their event. Now, according to some carriers, they've leaked a date that seemingly was leaked to them by Apple themselves, according to them anyway, some carriers or carriers like T-Mobile and others overseas that have said that perhaps on October 13th, we'll see an Apple event. Now that would mean we'll get invites usually the week before. So you've got the fifth through the ninth, maybe in that week, we'll see that in October for an invite for the event on, thir on the 13th, where we'll see the next iPhones. And so that seems to make sense with pre-orders going live later that week, usually on a Friday. So that would be the 16th at 8 a.m. or 8 a.m. Eastern time. And then we would see the sale of the first iPhone 12 on the 23rd. So that seems to make sense based on what Apple's done in the past. But apparently we won't see the pro models until November, according to some people. So that seems to make sense. We would have the iPhone 12, maybe the upcoming iPhone, smaller iPhone 12, as well as the pros launching in November. So a split launch, like many have said. Now, other than that event, it seems like Apple may also be pushing a November event as well, where they would show off the next MacBook Pro refresh with Apple's new silicon in it. So that's apparently coming with the 13 and 16 inch MacBooks. We have seen events in November before. I just don't know that we've seen three events, one right after the next, but it's possible we'll see that. And it seems to make sense if Apple's not ready to show that at their iPhone event and they want to dedicate it specifically for those new MacBooks. Now, speaking of the iPhone 12, it appears that the iPhone 12, the smallest size is going to be called the iPhone 12 mini. Now this apparently makes sense. According to leaker Duan Rai, who actually showed the iPad air pamphlet before it launched, he's now showing some barcodes with some of the information that usually goes on the boxes showing the name iPhone 12 mini. And so that means the smaller one would be mini. They haven't, I think used that name since well, Mac mini, but also iPod mini, but we would have this new squared off design and it certainly should be called mini because here's an iPhone 11 and you can see it's very small. So iPhone 12 mini iPhone 12 iPhone 12 pro and iPhone 12 pro max. And so it seems like we're going to have the mini size. So that would be pretty interesting to see. Also, it would have a smaller notch. Now this had me thinking a couple different things is maybe if it has a smaller notch, it doesn't have face ID and maybe it has that new touch ID that Apple has shown on the new iPad air where it's integrated into the power button. I know a lot of people would appreciate that given that a lot of people wear masks today and you need to quickly unlock your phone. You could do that using touch ID on the side, or maybe it could have both. I would love to see both. I like touch ID, so I would love to see it in the power button, but there's no real information saying that's definitely going to happen, but hopefully it does. Now, as far as the iPhone 12 pro and 12, those sizes should be the same 6.1 size that we have with the iPhone 11. So it would be a squared off design with the exact same body that we have with the 12 and 12 pro. The good thing about this is we could have the same cases that fit both devices and you could just differentiate them based on camera lenses. So maybe we'll have two with the iPhone 12 and three with the iPhone 12 pro. And so that would be really interesting to see. And that would make it much easier to manufacture for Apple as well as have fewer cases. And I think a lot of people would appreciate having fewer case options. It would just be easier. Just grab an iPhone 12 case and you'd be good to go regardless of your device. Now, also, as far as colors go, Apple changes the iPhone colors every year for the less expensive model, the iPhone 11 in this case, or the iPhone 10 R the previous year. And so this year it looks like we may get those pastel colors that we have with the iPad air. So blue, maybe a peachish orange color in the green, just like this one here with the iPhone 11. So maybe we'll get some more pastel colors, slight shade differences. And that would be nice to see that I would love to see different colors on the pro models like blue that we have with the Apple watch as well. We may see that, but we'll have to wait and see now with the iPhone 12 pro max, apparently it's going to be set apart a little bit in that it's going to be an actual flagship this year compared to everything else. So not only will it have that squared off design like this, prototype here that doesn't function, but it would also have a LIDAR sensor, 
maybe different internals, maybe a better display in some way, maybe some advanced technology that we're not aware of yet. So hopefully we'll have a few surprises with that. And if it's a real flagship, we may not see it until later in November. And then others are saying we may not see the millimeter wave version of iPhone 12 Pro Max until maybe even late this year or early next year based on some of the manufacturing. Now that's not much of a problem for most people since 5G is readily rolled out in sub six frequencies, but millimeter wave is very specific to different cities in different areas. So you literally have to be standing on a corner to get the super fast speeds of 5G with millimeter wave. So that's not big, a big problem for me. It's also very power hungry and millimeter wave doesn't travel through walls easily. So I don't really care about that personally. I like the sub six where it's readily available and faster than 4G. So hopefully we'll see that, but we may not get a millimeter wave version until later that's set apart. Usually that would require a larger battery too for extended runtime. Now, as far as the next iPhones and what they have inside, according to ice universe, who tested the a 14 CPU inside one of them using and two, benchmarks, he was saying that the benchmark tests showed that it was slower than the Snapdragon 865 plus. Now I find this hard to believe since Apple really jumps ahead of everyone, but it's possible that they're doing that and it would be way more power efficient. So if they've found a way to make a 13 CPU speeds, but be super power efficient and give us extended battery life, I would definitely welcome that. And previous leaks have said that we will get a lot more battery life hours more battery life. So it would be really great to see that. So hopefully we'll see something like that and better battery life, even in the smallest iPhone 12 mini. While it's rumored that we won't get a power brick with the new iPhone 12, we may get a new braided cable. So this is a black braided cable, USB-C to lightning that comes with a Mac pro when you buy one. So you've got lightning on one end and USB-C on the other, but it may have a white version of this cable that comes with the iPhone 12, 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. Now, the good thing is these are much more durable. They should be better for the environment if that's what Apple's pushing as far as not including a power brick. So these should last a lot longer. In fact, this one I mistakenly ran over with a chair and it still works just fine. So it works fine. It just doesn't look as nice, but it would be really nice to see all of the cables braided and to last a lot longer than what we've had in the past. Now, as far as iOS 14.2 beta two, well, I would expect that as soon as well, tomorrow at this point, based on what we've seen in the past, we're on a two week cycle and we'll see it tomorrow or Wednesday at the latest. Of course, Apple can change this at any time. In fact, it could come out today. We've seen it as late as 6 PM at this point, but hopefully we'll see it as soon as tomorrow, usually around 1 PM Eastern time. And I'll let you know, of course, as soon as I know when it's released. Now, the strange thing is we haven't seen iOS 14.1 and many people are saying that's because it's going to launch with the iPhone 12 and then iOS 14.2 will launch a little bit later on. Hopefully that's true. It's kind of odd that we haven't had a beta of 14.1, but we have one of 14.2 already. This is very strange and we haven't really seen this before. So hopefully we'll see that in the future. Now, speaking of iOS 14, apparently Facebook has gone to Apple and said, you already allow default browsers and default mail apps. Can we have a default messaging app as well? So we can use Facebook messenger, for example, as our main app. And so it's hard to say if Apple will allow this in the future, since iMessage is such a tie in to the OS, but hopefully they'll allow more default apps, including music and everything else in the future. But right now, apparently Facebook is asking Apple, will you allow this? And if they don't, maybe there'll be a lawsuit. It's hard to say at this point maybe we'll see that in the future. Now, as far as future products, it looks like Apple is apparently working on mini led. And I've talked about this in the past, but according to Ming-Chi Kuo, the iPad pro will get mini led in the next version. And what that means is that's the way it sort of backlights everything, which would make it much more power efficient, maybe even last longer as far as the display goes and get brighter as well. Now that's not micro led where those are the actual pixels. So we'll see that probably down the road in the future, but right now they're lighting this with leds and using mini leds would probably save power and again, give for a brighter display. So we may see that in the first half of 2020, according to Ming Chi Kuo. And we've seen that rumor for quite some time. So I would expect that to be pretty true. Now, as far as charging the iPhone, we've heard about air power for years at this point, and it looks like Apple's working on 
AirPower Mini. And maybe it would align with those magnets we've seen in previous pictures that the iPhone 12 will have magnets in the back, and maybe it will line up to this new AirPower device. It wouldn't surprise me if they launched their own charger, and I would love to see this, not only for the iPhone, but maybe something that uses watch as well, so you could charge your watch and iPhone together. Of course, Nomad and those companies offer similar sorts of charging solutions, but Apple with maybe that new magnet ring would make it even more convenient in that it would just snap into place. So maybe we'll see something like that in the future. Now, a lot of you have been asking me, when are we going to see Mac OS Big Sur? And so based on what we've seen in the past, I think we'll see it maybe in the first couple weeks of October. Last year, Mac OS Catalina came out on the 7th of October, and so maybe we'll see Big Sur then. We're already at beta 8 of Big Sur, so it's possible we'll see it in a couple weeks. Now, Apple could be waiting until they push out those silicon MacBook Pros that I talked about earlier in order to release Mac OS Big Sur, make sure it's really ready for the new silicon. So we may see that, we may not, but hopefully we see it in a couple weeks since it seems to be pretty stable with beta 8. Now, apparently Apple is working on those over the ear AirPod studio still. So they would be a replacement maybe for beats in the future, but it's hard to say, but basically they would just be a higher fidelity version of over the ear studio headphones. So hopefully we'll see those soon. And this is what they look like apparently based off of recent leaks. John Prosser sort of confirmed this. So maybe they'll look like this. Maybe they won't, but they're still in prototype phase, or we could see them as soon as the November event. It looks like. Now, as far as the Apple Watch is concerned, this is a Series 6 titanium Apple Watch, and I'm really enjoying it. But some people that upgraded to watchOS 7 on the Series 3 Apple Watch are having issues with random reboots. Now, people have messaged me directly. Also, 9to5Mac has actually mentioned this, and quite a few people just seem to have it reboot on its own. I've had people check their battery health in settings, their battery life, and they don't seem to have an issue with it. So it seems to be something with the OS itself. So within settings, you go to battery, go to battery health, and this should be at 100% as it's brand new, but you'll see you have maximum capacity. I thought maybe the batteries were just drained down if you had a new or an older series three and it was rebooting, but it's so prevalent that it seems to be an issue at this point. So hopefully Apple will fix that with the next version, but so far we haven't seen that. Now, according to love to dream, Apple was apparently planning watch bands for the 2020 Olympics to correspond with a country that you represent. So Unfortunately, we won't see those this year, but hopefully we'll see those next year with the 2021 Olympics. So maybe we'll see those in the future. And then finally, Apple is still planning to release an iPod touch with the next generation update. So maybe we'll have an A13 in an iPod touch so that we can have updates for years to come, maybe with some more Ram and maybe some new cameras as well. There's no information about the hardware, just that Apple is working on it and we should see it in the future. So hopefully we see that pretty soon. And of course, as I know more, I'll keep you updated with everything else. So that's it for this particular update. Let me know what you're most excited about in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.